classes complete. Calorie deficit. All right, so 1,480 calories consumed so far today. Actually, let's just get extra detailed with it. 110 grams of protein, 40 grams of fat, 170 grams of carbs. All right, I, I got some to play around with. It's, it's 4.45 now, so go home, do a reasonably... Actually, I think I'll probably just do two meals-ish. I'll do one, maybe like 500-ish calories, and do one more at the same size, and I get to go to bed. It's if you can sort of look at food in a little bit of a with one extra level of I want to say let's just say comprehension right instead of just looking at it as like whatever like oh if I eat this I'll feel full you know if you can look at it and before you think that you're kind of like okay that's this many calories and it's made of you know this much this many grams of fat this many grams of carbs this many grams of protein I think you're going to be better off, even just as a normal Joe, you know? Like, I know, you know, I'm not one typically to make what you'd call conventionally healthy food decisions, but I know that I'm not going to want to eat something that's just like, you know, straight up fats without a moderate amount of protein or whatever. Like, really all I'm trying to say is if you can look at stuff and if you could order like a chicken sandwich or something, and without having to look up the nutritional information, just kind of be able to know from experience and practice from tracking your macros and weighing things. Like, you know, just, okay, this is, that's about 20 grams of protein worth of chicken. Uh, that's a whole bun plus some sauce. All right, that's probably about 50 grams of carbs. You know, if you can look at food like that, it's only going to serve to benefit you in a, well, I guess let's just call it a dieting context. You don't necessarily have to be a bodybuilder to benefit from that kind of skill. You know, I think if people, a lot of people kind of don't like the idea of having to track their macros like that because they don't want to take the fun out of food. Like, oh, I don't want to look at food like that, you know, like it'll kind of, they're kind of worried it'll ruin their perception, which, you know, to an extent, to an extent, I guess you're kind of right. You know, I definitely don't look at food the exact same way as like a normal Joe, but doesn't stop me from enjoying it. You know, I'm going to enjoy a big ass bowl of mac and cheese just as much as you are, but I'm going to know, all right, this is 80 grams of carbs, 35 grams of fat, maybe 15 grams of protein. I'd count the protein from the cheese, dairy product, you know, the only kind of protein that I wouldn't necessarily count towards my total gram per pound of body weight is like, well, the only kind I do count is pretty much from what I would call dedicated sources, you know, meats, fish, poultry, dairy products. Those are pretty much the main ones, you know, so notice how I didn't say like soy protein or like bean protein. I mean, you just got to look at the numbers, man. Look up a, basically it's called like a protein quality index, something along those lines, whatever. And it like gives a numerical grade from zero to a hundred for different kinds of proteins from, you know, because there's, there's, there is protein in beans and all sorts of other foods, right? Technically proteins, amino acids. But, you know, stuff like a soy protein powder and things like that, you know, out of 100 points, they're only getting like 60 or less, you know. And then you jump up to that top, you know, the A plus, the S grade, whatever. Right? You're seeing milk protein, beef, chicken, eggs, you know, stuff like that. So I think that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. But enough of this diet talk. What the, what's the lift going to be? I haven't even started discussing that. So, arms. And I'm going to start doing forearms. So dedicated forearms in the routine. I haven't been for a while just because my forearms aren't underdeveloped. But I keep seeing clips of Lee Priest where this fucking part of his forearm is just huge. And it's kind of making me... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say inadequate, but it's kind of given me the itch to, you know, beef up my forearms a little bit. For the most part, I'd say you wouldn't want your forearms to overpower your arms. But the only situation I think that really happens in is when you work too much of your uh, brachial radialis. You like that? So that's like the muscle in your forearm that's activating when you do a reverse curl, right? Like this thing up here. If that gets too big, 
I think it kind of throws your your arm proportions out of whack just a little bit. But you know, having this section, this uh, what, what's uh, what would you call this action? Um, f flexion, whatever, right? This where it's kind of correlating to your grip strength and like doing a forearm curl, that can get huge, and it's not going to throw off your look. You know, I want to be, uh, I want that Ramon Dino look from the elbow outward, if you know what I'm talking about. So I'll probably throw some of the, some uh, some sets of forearm curls in at the end of arms, and then I haven't done calves for a couple days, so calves is going to get thrown in too. But other than that, the arm day itself is going to be the same as usual. Pushdowns, potentially some other tricep variations. I need to figure out a solid method of doing overhead extensions. What I really need is like, you know how there's the free weight section and you've got all the adjustable benches? And you know how sometimes there's a seat, you know, dedicated for shoulder press? I need to find one of those. I think there's one here. Because if I butt that up against a cable, then I can do overhead cable just like that with, you know, like a V-bar or something, and that'll feel sweet. I'm not really into doing it standing with like a rope. I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me, you know? So, eight sets of those tricep movements from, I mean, I'm not sure what order I wanna do. I guess I'll have to decide that based on what looks good and what's available. You know, I'm not going to a private gym. This place is gonna be packed. Not like that's going to stop me from getting a solid lift, though. Come on, let's be real. And then biceps is going to be even simpler than tries. Just a bunch of freaking curls. Dumbbell, easy bar, preacher, cable. Maybe barbell curls. Whatever, man. You know, honestly, with biceps, I don't think there's too much... Let's just say there's not a massive need for variability in your training with biceps. Right, with chest, you want to do a lot of pressing, but you also probably want to finish off your workout with some flies, right? Just because it's sort of hitting the chest in a little bit of a different way. But, you know, <laughs> what's your bicep doing here to here? I mean, there's some funky shit with rotation, but unless you're like a freaking arm wrestler, I don't think you need to worry about it. So, really, as long as you're going from a straightened position to a curled position, and then when you get up here, really give it just a little extra moment of, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? You get a solid ass pump. You know, I'm not saying just like only do standing dumbbell curls for your whole workout, but I've done it before. You know, I don't do that for every workout, of course, but based on whether or not a machine or a movement feels like good or not, kind of dictates how long I stay there for, or how much of my workout. I dedicate to that one machine. If I do a set of dumbbell curls, and for whatever reason, it's just like perfect, I'm strong, it feels good, I'm getting pumped, you know, I've got no need to go somewhere else. So, as long as you do a, really, you know, do whatever feels good to you, and as long as you load it up, the machine or the movement with a solid amount of weight, you really push yourself, you finish the lift with a freaking solid pump, what else can you ask for? What else can you freaking ask for? So, Pre has already been consumed. Two scoops of bloodshot and one scoop of hostility. I'm freaking excited to get in there. So, let's just jump to whatever that first tricep set is going to be, goddammit. The machines, like the cable stacks at this gym, they're not that easy to add extra weight to. Because usually I'd want to throw like two or three plates onto the full stack. For a set of normal straight bar pushdowns. But since I can't really load up a ton of weight, you know, when I'm fresh, uh, the stack is just too light. So I'll do single arm so I can go a little bit heavier than I could do both arms at once. But I think just a couple of sets here to start and then we'll go from there. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, one more set like that. That's a perfect starter. Alright, so this weight is heavy enough that I can't really even do partials. I just get to a point where I actually hit failure. I like that. Let's uh let's do one more a little bit lighter, focus more so on the actual squeeze on the bottom. But then I don't know, move on to something else. I'm not sure what. Do uh, um, either dips, straight bar pushdowns, or skull crushers. I'll decide which one of these three while I go get a drink. All right, so machine dips it is. And this dip machine kind of doesn't rub me like it doesn't rub me the wrong way, but it doesn't really rub me like perfectly the right way either. Just because these two arms, the fact that they move back and forth like this, it just feels like unnecessary complexity. I mean, I guess it's good for muscular imbalances because the fact that they can move like that means that each one is loaded up with the same amount of weight. Uh, if you kind of understand what I'm saying there. But I kind of prefer just the simpler ones with like the two arms where you just push them down like that. But whatever, throw the whole stack around, really focus on loading a ton of weight and then after this, I'll do some kind of squeezing motion. Obviously, I'm trying to squeeze all my reps, but, you know, typically when I say a heavy set or a squeezing set, I mean, like, you know, curling the 75s for 10. I'd call that more of, like, a heavy set. Or, you know, curling, like, the 40s for 15 and doing really slow reps and getting a really good squeeze. That's kind of the two opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of, like, style that I usually use. But let's throw this around for maybe two and we'll just try to go hard as always. <sighs> Yeah, and then the fact that they move around means like my last couple reps get really fucking wobbly. Yeah, I don't I don't love it, but I do like the load on my triceps. It's definitely different than just a normal push down. So whenever you do any kind of dipping motion and you're trying to hit your triceps, this is where kind of having some more training experience will do you good. Because I'm trying not to use my pecs at all. But just the nature of this movement, I mean that's why people talk about doing dips for chest development, because you're just doing like a decline press. But I'm really trying to just send signals to my triceps to extend and nothing else. So whether or not you can do that, if you can't, it'll just come with time. So let's do one more. <sighs> <sighs> Okay. Let's 
Let's go do some kind of push down. That's enough of this. So usually I kind of, I'm a little bit of a hater when people overcomplicate a movement or like they add D handles to other attachments. But in that same sense, I guess I'm also hypocritical because I'll do it too. But basic premise of this little setup is like a W bar with two D handles in the little ridges. So it's still just a normal put down, but the handle just makes it such that it feels a little different. All I'm going to try to do with the whole stack right now is just really squeeze at the bottom, really good flex, then come back up, do that as many times as possible. Okay. Let's do one more like that. Let's, uh, let's do some of the kind of straight bar. I don't know. I'll figure it out. There's a finisher, I think, just a normal straight bar. Well, it's not a straight bar, but whatever. Easy bar, push down. But the stack was a little light. Slap a plate onto it. Now all I have to do is make sure this thing doesn't come undone and give me whiplash and, like, rip my eye off. But it's good. What am I talking about? enough of that let's uh let's start biceps man tries are done halfway okay i mean i agree curls in front of the rack you're kind of an asshole i'll stand right here it's fine it's people can walk in front of me if they really want to but 80s should be a good starter Okay, that's enough. Fuck. Woo. All right, let's drop it to seventy five. All right, let's do three sets of the dumbbell curls. So, 80s, 75s. Let's find the 70s. Mm. 
That's enough dumbbell curls. Let's do um, a little Tekka Poppin is gonna carry me through this set of Preacher Easy Bar curls. It's, well, I mean, it's definitely probably as heavy as I'd wanna go. I mean, a 35 and a five. You probably don't see me doing any more than a 45 with the Easy Bar curl on these. It's kind of just unnecessary. Like if I wanna load up a lot of weight on a bicep move, I'm more inclined to wanna go to like you know, dumbbell curls, or maybe cable curls, I kind of like too. But with a preacher, it's sort of a movement which, I mean, from my perspective, it asks to be done in a very intentional, like thoughtful way. Like with those dumbbell curls, I, I saw one video that was describing like that kind of style of set. They called it a ballistic set, where you just move around as much weight as possible, as quickly as possible. And I guess I didn't really realize that had a name, but whatever, that's kind of what I like doing over there. But now, I want to go a bit slower, really focus on that contraction. You know, really get that burning sensation that we're all in here for. And then I'll move on to maybe cable curls, maybe machine curls. I'll see what speaks to me. Let's take the fives off and do one more. One more, a little lighter, but I was pretty satisfied with that last one. You know, I do want to get to a point where I straight up cannot do another complete rep, but I don't want to call it right then either. So I do want to get a couple little partials, even if I'm only moving the bar a couple inches. I think that's a level of intensity, which I would say it might not have a perfect correlation, but it's probably got a strong connection with fucking gains. So let's throw this mofo around before I do something else. Okay, fine. All right. I don't know what I want to do yet. You know what? I lied. Let's do one more set of preachers. But instead of easy bar, I'll grab a dumbbell, do some single arm. I think that'll feel pretty good. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's fucking scary. Um, I like that, but I want to do something else. Let's do some cable curls next. All right, so again, a sacrilegious activity, curling in the squat rack. There's open racks next to me. I mean, if it was packed, if it was prime time in here, you probably wouldn't catch me curl in the squat rack if people were waiting to actually use it for its intended purpose. So another thing, all this, all this gym culture, whatever, when they talk about like unspoken rules, Use your freaking brain, use your best discretion. You know? And also, if you get big enough, nobody will, nobody would fuck with you anyway. So, whatever. One set of squats here, and then let's just throw this shit around. Wait, did I just say one more set of squats? <laughs> All right, whatever, come on.
Okay. Let's take the tens off the side and just do one more. One little trick with the barbell curls. I used to not like these at all. They would just wrench my forearms. As I'm doing them, I'm not just doing a curl like this. I'm almost trying to imagine pulling my elbows towards each other as I come up. Something about that particular fucking cue just takes all the pressure off my forearms. I can really squeeze the kind of upper outside part of my bicep. So. Let's go check this pump, man, and get some forearms started. All right, now just to turn the exposure down. Oh, too much. Eh, yeah, perfect. Very freaking good. So, little little side yoga room taken. But this lighting's pretty cool here. You know, I do kind of put a little bit of value on the pose down, just because, you know, just a change in lighting can make you look a little freakier. I guess it shouldn't really matter, because, like, no matter how you're lit, you still have the same amount of like size but you know whatever it's all about presentation at the end of the lift to hype you up so let's see what all those curls and push downs did i think i'm definitely going to add in the straight bar barbell curls into the routine i didn't i hadn't done that for a long time just because it usually wrenches my wrist like ugh, like all sorts of stuff in here my forearm did not love it but when you do that fucking little technique where you pull your elbows inward Right? It kind of gives it a more natural path. So a little, uh, little tip if you didn't know or if you did, then you get to say, yeah, God damn it, I knew it. So let's run through some classics and then get back in there for forearms. Oh my, even just fucking sitting here like this is fucking sick. What else is there? Oh yeah, side tricep, what am I talking about? Ooh, <laughs> holy shit, dude. And triceps are already fucking like, not even pumped in. I mean, there's probably some residual pump left, but this is definitely not nothing. One more, and then we can get back to the, back into the battlefield, as it were. Oh yeah, it's just kind of a freaking classic. Pump speaks for itself. Let's get back in there for forearms. All right, so I used to train forearms, I mean, pretty routinely. I've kind of been slacking on them now. So this is one of the staple movements that I like. You just grab like a pretty heavy dumbbell, like as heavy as you feel comfortable doing. Your forearms are pretty strong. I mean, you've seen dudes deadlift like 800 pounds without straps. Your forearms are a strong ass muscle. So following that logic, I want to train them with a pretty good amount of weight, at least for the first couple of sets. So I'm thinking, well, so let me just give them this. So I've seen people do these where they take like a barbell, they sit on the edge of a bench and they do both arms at once. I think that's kind of funky. It kind of fucks with my wrists a little bit. So I mean, my, my classic forearm workout that I used to do, you know, on a weekly basis with arms every lift, I've been slacking for the last while just because they're already decently developed relative to everything else. But, you know, just hang a dumbbell off, I don't know, 20 reps, whatever, do 20 on the other side, set it down, rest, just do it again. I mean, after you do three sets of these and you really go heavy, 
your forearms should just be fucking like i mean what else can i say other than pumped like it'll be hard to even like open your hand because everything in here will just swell up with blood so i'm gonna sit here for probably i don't know maybe four or five sets and then i might jump onto a bit of a lighter squeezing movement but same logic right here to here that's the motion which i'm aiming for so let's throw the 75 around Yeah, a couple more just like this. You know, when people think about training forearms, they always think about hammer curls or like reverse curls like this, which if you're trying to grow this back part of your forearm, good, perfect, that's sick. That's gonna hit what you're aiming for. But for me, I, I think if you get this back part of your forearm too big, it kind of gives your arm a weird look. Like I'm aiming for that fucking, like if this is the flat wing, right? This is the drumstick, this is the flat. You know, I want this bottom part to just be like hanging off the bone. So let's just bust through some more of these and then see what I want to do next. Okay. All right, so I'm still doing the same thing. I'm still taking my forearm from like this position here to here, right? This is the active movement path. But instead of doing it on that bench where I'm bent over like that, now I'm standing in open air, grabbing a cable, right? But I'm still doing the same thing. If you look at it on just a forearm to hand movement level, the same thing is going on, right? Like, you know, same thing with dips and pushdowns. Sure, a dip looks way fucking different than a normal pushdown. But if you just zoom in on the fucking mechanical system that is your tricep, upper arm, and forearm, then all that's going on is it's bending and then it's straightening out. I think thinking about things in that kind of way, like getting in tune with your own anatomy, that can kind of help you not only just have a better understanding of what you're doing mid-set, but it could also help you kind of come up with like a different fucking variation of something or other. Like you could probably do a cool set of like rows on a chest press somehow, if the movement path looks right. You know, it kind of just opens your eyes to new shit. But I think three, well, I forget how many sets of those dumbbells I did, I'll have to recount the clips. But however many is left, they'll add up to eight, is how many sets of these single arm curls I'm about to do. And then we can go see if forearms look any more pumped than before. They definitely feel kind of swollen, so that's a good sign. Okay. All right, let's go find some fancy lighting and discuss. All right, so they feel pretty freaking pumped. Like, even just sitting here and, like, straightening my fingers, like, I can still do it, but, like, I can feel the tension, right? It's like when you get a calf pump and you, uh, you know, you try to, like, stretch your Achilles, like, you can feel it's just tight. So let's, uh, let's see if I can cut off blood flow and get some veins poking out like crazy. It's pretty solid. Pretty solid amount of veins, vascularity. Let's hit the other one. And not as crazy. For whatever reason, my right forearm is just a touch more vascular than the left. Kind of just, I don't know, just for kind of whatever reason, you know. But definitely feel kind of pumped on the bottom side. Like I wanted. 
So I think for this bulk, I'm going to add whatever this part of my forearm is to the end of arms, just so I can kind of get some extra beef down here. It just makes you look kind of cool having big forearms, even when you're wearing short sleeves. If they're just fucking like jumping out at you, it's nice. So I'll say this when it comes to forearms. I'll get this question rarely, but sometimes, you know, people say, can you thicken up your wrist, right? The thickness of your wrist is the topic of discussion. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say you totally can to an extent. To an extent. Obviously, you can't, like, make your bones any thicker than they are, right? As an untrained lifter, you could have a really small wrist. But just from getting thicker, you know, meat up here, sure, most of it's down here, right? This bottom portion. That's where most of the beef is. But you're definitely going to kind of thicken up all these little tendons up here. So if you're concerned with the fucking circumference of your wrist, I think adding some forearm training into your routine and just kind of getting bigger in general it'll thicken it up maybe a little i think you're being a little too subconscious or a little too self-conscious about it i i never i don't remember the last time i've ever i don't remember if i've ever looked at somebody and thought oh what the fuck is up with that with that guy's wrists i think that's more of just something where you yourself are hypersensitive to it so it kind of jumps out at you but the general public couldn't care less so i'm going to finish calves uh no point showing it it's just eight sets of single leg calf raises but let's get in the car let's get in the freaking car all right so sorry are you just starting yeah okay. all right sure interesting enough someone else wanted to use the calf machine rare sight no but so i wasn't going to record calves but five plates looks kind of cool so I, i'll get one clip but you know, relatively controlled uh, but, you know, sometimes I'll do sets of calves where I'm kind of bouncing it up and down pretty quick. Or I'll go a little bit lighter and do more, like, slow, controlled reps. Uh, if you get a calf pump and they're, they feel sore, you definitely did something right. Any calf stimulation is better than no calf stimulation. And, you know, I'm not really a betting man, but I'd, I'd say the odds are probably against you just looking at, you know, the current state of lifters. You're probably not doing enough calves. So I'll just get this one set done. I'll do seven more afterwards, but I'll just record the one and, and uh, I'll go check the calf pump. Let's fast forward to seven sets from now. All right, I was getting ready to deprive you of the calf check, but may as well. I ended up upping it to six plates for those sets too. So there's definitely some beef going on. Your calves kind of lose definition when they're pumped, but there's definitely some shit in there for sure. I've uh, I've got the ink like one little front calf vein poking out too. But yeah, I mean calves for me, they're not a weak point. That's for sure, but I do kind of want it to be a bit bigger. Like this tape kind of like a little ankle and then a lot of meat up here. That looks pretty fucking sick. So I'm gonna loiter for a little bit longer. And then I've got two pounds of steak that I left in the sous vide for like four hours. I'll probably cut it in half, sear one side on the stove and that'll be dinner. So we're done, let's get out of here. All right, significant time has passed. <laughs> Once I freaking finished calves, I was in there for an hour and a half just shooting it up, chatting, talking smack, as you do, as you do. It's uh, it's freaking nice in there, you know? Just having a little bit of a gym click, dudes you see a lot, you know, you don't even have to necessarily be really close friends with them. But just kind of that familiarity with being in there and doing the same stuff. It's fun. It's very freaking fun. Unspoken benefit of going to the gym on a consistent basis is you kind of get acclimated to this one set of regulars. 
who you see, you know, for a while, and uh, I think you have, you definitely have something to gain by chatting with them. Now, I guess that's not, um, that's only a piece of advice for you if you're a little bit potentially anxious about going up and talking to somebody. You know, I've, uh, I've kind of felt that before. <laughs> This is this is kind of reminding me of one gym I went to in Florida, and uh, you know I show up, and of course I'm just like a random dude because I'm on vacation. There's a whole crew of, you know, guys actually talking to each other, so I'm fucking like, you know, I'm looking around all serious, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to like be tough or whatever, and then as soon as one guy came up and like talked to me, and this is a, this is a while ago. This wasn't like, holy crap, I've seen you, like this was just a normal dude asking me like a normal gym question. And as soon as me and him started talking, it all of that like you know, masculine whatever tension that we kind of had built up, it was like you know I'd look at them and they'd look back at me, and we kind of like, like no smiling, you know, you know what I'm talking about when you kind of like eye somebody up. But then as soon as we started chatting, boom, that whole little crew we're fucking talking. It's great, freaking great. You know I'm here to train for sure. Goal number one, priority number one, is get in the gym and do my lift solid pump, stimulate whatever muscle I'm aiming for so I can put some more beef on my frame. But, you know, once that's done, if there was, I mean, if everybody was in there, I could sit in the gym for another two hours. Especially this one, because it's got a little bit of a snack bar. So I could just be like, oh, God, guys, I'm getting kind of freaking hungry. I'm going to go up, grab two quest bars, and then come back down. <laughs> you know, that's just fun in there. Solid-ass social hour for sure. Because I'm not really one to go out because I don't freaking drink or anything like that. And it's not because I'm a health nut. It's just not conducive with gains. You know, you're fucking compromising your system in terms of muscle recovery. Right? So what am I going to do? Not that. But, you know, every so often. For Halloween, I'll definitely go walk around just because it's fun. But, you know. Being the... If you can somehow manage to make yourself the designated driver more frequently more frequently than anybody else in your little friend group, you're probably going to be better off when it comes to your performance in the gym. Actually, prop Yeah, okay. I won't say definitely because, you know, obviously there are huge dudes who fucking drink a ton, but more likely than not, it's just, it's just another thing that your body is going to have to deal with. You know, it's just a, a tax on your system. You, know, you never hear somebody come into the gym and say, dude, I've been fucking drinking a ton this week. I feel so good right now. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Come on, let's be real. Now, I'm not saying you can't do both. But it's probably not in your best interest. Enough of this little preaching. I, uh... So actually, I mean, I kind of, I feel reasonably strongly about that. In the earlier videos, like way, I mean, back in the early spring bulk videos, I feel like I kind of had a lot to say. You know, because obviously I'm, I hadn't made any little speeches before or anything, so I had a lot of stuff that I really wanted to get out. And I was really talking smack on, like, if it's Friday night and you're going out drinking and you fucking skip the gym, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> even back then, too, I was a little bit less comfortable filming these, so I could I, I sounded way different. Like I was kind of putting on a, a voice. But no, I mean, I, I still kind of feel that way, you know. Like, if lifting is your number one priority, and, I mean, let's just say this as, a, as an if, this particular scenario, if getting jacked and your performance metrics in the gym is your number one priority, then, you know, cutting down on your sleep plus, you know, solid amount of alcohol in your system, alcohol, not good, not ideal, right? But, you know, you're not a freaking antisocial... Uh, just lift or nut you gotta have some fun as well so really it's it's kind of up to you, you gotta find that balance because it's not like yeah, really that's all I'm trying to say, you know you gotta find a little bit of balance in your in your uh, in your situation work hard, play hard I think for me it's not very hard for me to not play hard so it's a little bit easier like, I don't have to skip going out to, like, go to, a, go to the gym, hit arms or whatever. Because, for one thing, it's what I want to do. 
but you know, I don't know. I must just have a little bit of a what's the word I'm trying to think of? Not antisocial. Maybe secluded. Maybe a little bit more of a secluded mindset. I don't know. It's just because I know that at the end of the day, sure. I mean, if I went out and did like something fun or whatever, or, like ran around and I don't know, whatever. Insert fun activity here and I did that instead of going to hit my lift, then in my mind I know I probably wouldn't feel that good, you know? So it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a situation where you kind of have to look at it from the outside perspective of you in the future. Are you gonna feel better in three months if maybe you started doing your cardio consistently and you started tracking your macros? You maybe watch some more uh, workout videos and like actually kind of learned a little bit of a routine, improved your training, really kind of improved your intensity too. Are you going to feel better after three months of doing that or three months of just kind of, you know, doing your own little routine that you've kind of built up already, just maintaining the same intensity, taking a lot, taking off days, which you know, you didn't need, you know, and when I say it like that, obviously it sounds like the more motivated version is better. You're going to feel much better after that. But, you know, that's a balance that you're going to have to find yourself because you still got to balance this shit out with your normal life. So, no matter if you want to be a total nut and basically judge the quality of your day off of the quality of the lift and like making sure you hit your macros or whatever, or if you want to lift, I don't want to say more casually because you can still be intense and not be so anal about every little factor about the lifting. But, you know, you got to just kind of figure that out yourself. But for the most part, I think everybody, not everybody, but a good portion of people skip lifts, skip their cardio. But then they know later on, looking back, ah, oh, man, I wish I would have. Right. That is the last thing I want to have to think in the future. Oh, dude, I wish I would have. Right. That <laughs> it's <laughs> I mean, is that ever going to be a positive statement? When you have to look back at, you know, your last couple of years or months or weeks, whatever, and think, oh, man, I wish I could have blank. You're never saying that in the fun, reminiscing tone. It's always kind of a regretful, uh, geez, you know. So take that what you will, my little motivational whatever. So Tomorrow's going to be legs. Pretty excited for legs. I'm getting a little extra excited for legs now because I'm trying to squat mid lift instead of uh, well mid quads that is instead of right as my opener for quads so it's a little bit less taxing on my mind in a sense because when I get ready for like a heavy set of squats and I don't mean like like all oh, pretty heavy I mean like as much weight as I can possibly do for like eight reps that makes me anxious I'm getting like nervous like sitting that's probably the only lift where I've loaded up the weight, I've finished my warm up, I've kind of sat down, and my heart has kind of started racing purely due to like nervousness. Like, oh shit, this is fucking heavy. You know, like even benching, like incline really heavy, like, I mean, incline four plates, no spotter, like that hasn't given me that same feeling as the squats, which is kind of a good thing, but it's also kind of a spooky thing. So I think squatting mid lifts, once my quads are already pre exhausted, I can go a little bit lighter and do some more squat volume. I think in terms of actual like muscle growth, that's probably a better situation. And if I think that, that that's what I want to do in my routine, right? It kind of just makes sense. But also squatting is really heavy like that, really pushing it. Obviously not pushing it so hard that like you get hurt or anything, but really heavy squats, I think that'll do you good in terms of developing your freaking mental toughness in the gym. You know, because squats are hard, man. Squats are freaking hard. They're fun, though. But they're fun after you do them, because you get to be like, holy shit, that was good. So If you haven't been squatting, and you think you should have, or you should be, you know, listen to that little voice in your head that's telling you, come on, man, you should have squatted. Cardio in the morning, though, which we'll just leave it at that. And then... That's all I got to freaking say, you know? So, home, 
I got that steak going, which I'm pretty hyped up for. Um, this post car talk is actually post, no, no, this post lift talk is actually post the lift and a little Kroger trip. I stopped to get some low calorie barbecue sauce, which I wanted. So that is probably going to come into play a little bit with the steak. And then just get ready to lift again tomorrow. Same as usual. Repeat the process. Keep the, well, I, I was about to say keep the growth going, but I'm not really growing right now because I'm, I'm trimming down. But you get what I'm saying. Don't take your foot off the gas on your routine. Stay hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So I'll freaking see you next time.